मन्नाथ श्रीजगन्नाथ मदगुरु श्रीजगदगुरु मधात्मा सर्वभूतात्मा तस्मै श्रीगुरवे वंदे वृंदावनानंदम राधिकां परमेश्वरीं गो परमाम शुद्धा लादेनीम शक्ति रूपिनी वंदे नवघनश्यामं पीत काऊशेय वाससं सानंदं सुंदरं शुद श्री कृष्णम् प्रकृते परम नमः कमलनाभा नमः कमल मालिनी नमः कमल पादायु नमस्ते कमले क्षण यो ब्रह्मानं विद्धाति पूर्वम् यो वै वेदांश्च प्रहिनोति तस्मै तग्वम् हा देव मात्म बुद्धि प्रकाशम् मुमुक्षुर वै शरणमहम् प्रपद्ये spiritually inquisitive divine souls as it is a regular practice let us chant and glorify the divine name for a few minutes and thereafter we will begin with the subject मुकुंद माधव गोविंद बोल केशव माधव हरि हरि बोल मुकुंद माधव गोविंद बोल केशव माधव हरि हरि Good. 
ಗೋವಿಂದ ಕೇಶವ ಮಾಧವ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ 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 ಮುಕುಂದ ಮಾಧವ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಬೋ ಕೇಶವ ಮಾಧವ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಬೋ 
सतगुरु सरकार की द स्क्रिप्चर स्टेट इह चे दशकद बोधुम प्राक शरीरस्य विसृसह कठोपनिषद 234 to utilize each and every moment of life towards the attainment of your ultimate aim. Because otherwise, as Shankaracharya states, Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Maranam, Punarapi Janani, Jatreshayanam, Ihe Sansare. Kaladustare Kripaya Pari Pahi Murari Bhajugo Vindam Bhajugo Vindam Go Vindam Bhajamuramati If you do not make proper use of this human body, you will be compelled to repeatedly take birth and die, to take birth and die, hanging upside down in the womb of a mother, full of intense suffering. And the Ramayana also states, Naritanupai vishaya manadehi palati sudha te shat vishlehi Tahi kabahu bhal kahai na koi gunja grahai paras mani khoi. In other words, he indeed is the greatest fool who attaches himself to this material world. And the plight of such a fool, according to Tusidas ji, is as pitiable as a madman who exchanges the precious touchstone for a piece of worthless glass, being enamored by its superficial beauty, and who thereafter goes from house to house begging for food. Such a fool must suffer here and hereafter, states Tulsidas ji. Jo na tarai bhav saagar nar samaj as paai So krit nindak mand mati atam han gati jai The individual who though equipped with the human body 
fails to make an attempt to cross the ocean of Maya, such an individual is dull-witted, he lacks intelligence, and meets the fate of a self-murderer. He's called Atam Hatyara, Atam Hanagati Jai. So paratra dukh pavai, sir dhuni dhuni pachitai, kalahi karmahi, shwarahi, mithya dosh lagai. He suffers in this world and the world beyond. And when it is too late, he beats his head in remorse, having wrongly blamed time, fate, or the will of God for not having practiced devotion, for not having worshipped God. Unfortunately, a great majority of humans are truly slayers of their own souls. Majority of them live their lives with only their physical welfare in mind, paying little or no attention to the well-being of the soul. We have lived countless lives in this way. We have wasted countless lives in this way and will continue to do so unless and until we realize the precious value of human life. And along with realizing the value of human life, we must also give thought to its transience, its fleeting nature. As the scriptures tell us, Ayushyam jalulol bindu chapalam pamam jivitam. In other words, the human span of life, the duration of human life is compared to a wave of water in the ocean. And its transience, its fleeting nature, as a bubble of water, a bubble of foam created by these waves of water in the ocean. These bubbles of water rise in the ocean moment by moment and they subside moment by moment. In other words, our life is as uncertain as that of a bubble of water that appears one moment and disappears the next. Shimaji has also beautifully written in Radha Govind Geet, Ayu Jal Bul Bula Govind Radhe Jane kab foot jaye sab ko bata de Pal ka bharosa nahi Govind Radhe Jane kab kaal nar tanu chen vade Radhe Radhe Govind Govind Radhe 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 Govind Govind Radhe Parlad, one of the youngest devotees of God, instructs his friends, his little friends, in the following way. He says, it is stated in the Bhagavad, Kaumara charet pragyo dharman bhagavata niha kohi janati kasyadya mrityu kalo bhavishyati. 761 Bhagavad. He says, My friends, Follow spiritual discipline in your childhood. Do not put it off till your youth. Why? For there is no surety that you will live to even see youth. Some of us die right in the mother's womb, some immediately after birth, and some in the prime of their youth. Contrary to common belief, Death does not wait for us to grow old. 
Yudhishthir, the eldest brothers of uh, the eldest brother of the Pandavas. In the Mahabharata, we read that he was asked sixty questions by Yaksh. And one of the most important questions was, Ke Mahashcharyam, what is the most surprising fact in the world? The wise Yudhishthira replied, Ahanyahani Bhutani Gachanti Yamalayam Sheshastrapu Michanti Kemascharya Matahaparam. He says, We see, he responded, we see our fellow beings dying every moment, going to the abode of Yamraj, and yet they who are left behind think that they will never die. This is certainly the most bewildering fact, that in the face of death, no one believes he will die. And even if we were guaranteed a long life, the scriptures state, in other words, if you have not practiced any, any spiritual discipline in your childhood or in your youth or in your adulthood, then how can you suddenly devote yourself fully to spirituality in the fourth and final stage, and that is old age? Hence, Shankaracharya has beautifully stated, Angam galitam palitam mundam dashana vihinam jatam tundam vridho yati grihitva dandam tadapinam munchatya shapindam bhajugovindam Bhajagovindam, Govindam, Bhajamurmati. Meaning that his body may be weak, may be feeble, head bald, gums toothless, and legs so weak that he cannot walk without a cane. And yet, the desire for the world remains ever so strong within the old man. Once a man who was extremely attached to his wealth all his life was lying on his deathbed. His family was surrounding him and he was trying to say something which sounded like Cow, boom, cow, boom. All were wondering what he was trying to communicate. Perhaps some wealth that he had left behind for them. So they consulted a doctor to get his voice back. The doctor recommended a thousand dollar injection. The dying man was injected. And he immediately, thereafter, he immediately spoke up. He said, why are you looking at, this, looking at me this way? I have been trying to tell you for the last 10 minutes that the cow in the next room is eating the broom. And saying this, he passed away. So the point, I'm sure you, you got the point, that although this man was on his deathbed, he was not able to think of God. All he could think about was the little amount of financial loss being incurred due to the cow eating the broom. So wisdom lies in making a sincere effort to walk on the path of spirituality while we are young, while we are strong, while we are healthy. Yesterday is gone, and tomorrow m may not belong to us. Once a man went to Santeknath and said, Sir, I cannot seem to focus on God. 
Sant Eknath said, Oh, you're talking about thinking of God. That is a wonderful thing. But I can see you're going to die within seven days. The man was terrified. He said, what should I do? What can I do? The Guruji said, the saint said, I'll give you a solution. Settle all your affairs and come to me in six days. The man went home, closed down his business. He followed the instructions of the Guru and returned to Sant Eknath on the sixth day. As a result, he settled all his affairs and as a result, his mind became very peaceful. All the hatred and vengeance harbored within against friends and family members was destroyed. All he could think of was the moment of death, the day of death. So he, ret he returned to Sant Eknath on the sixth day and said, Guruji, Tell me, what should I do now? I'm going to die tomorrow. And the saint replied, tell me something. Are you able to think of God now? And surprisingly enough, the man said yes. And the saint said, the reason is that you think today to be your final day. I'm able to think of God all the time because every time, every day, every morning when I wake up, I think it to be my last day. This is how an aspirant should think. Realizing the value, the precious value of this human life. Ratrir gamishyati bhavishyati suprabhatam bhaswanu deshyati Asishyati Pankajashri Ittham vichintyati Koshgate dvirefe Haanta hanta nalilim gaja ujjahar Once a bee was sitting inside a lotus tasting its nectar enjoying the lovely fragrance in the evening, the lotus began to close and the bee started thinking, oh, it's getting dark now, it's evening time, so the lotus is closing for the night. But that's all right. It is all right if I st stay trapped within the flower for the night. At least my m night will pass nicely. In the morning, the sun will shine in the sky and the lotus will bloom once again. But sad to say that while the bee was planning all this, suddenly an elephant came to drink water from the same pond where the lotus was. He abruptly uprooted the lotus and placed it in his mouth, swallowing the bee along with it. So bringing about the end of the bee, the bee was killed. So our situation, the scriptures and saints tell us, is quite similar to that of the bee. We plan to devote, we plan to live a disciplined life. We have great plans devoted to the quest of higher truths, and yet our plans fail to materialize. Instead, our life is wasted in the pursuit of more and more and more worldly enjoyments until the day we breathe our last. Dashrat, to give you another example, Dashrat, the, the king of Ayodhya and the father of Lord Ram was extremely brave, was very powerful, was very valiant. And he had the title of Ati Rathi had been conferred upon him. The word Rathi means a charioteer. 
and one who is able to fight thousands, thousands of rathis on his own is called a maharathi, and one who is able to fight thousands of maharathis on his own is known as an atirathi. He was so valiant, he was so powerful. In fact, the, na the name itself, Dashrat, means one who chariot travels in 10 different directions, is able to travel in 10, direction, 10 different directions on the battlefield. He was so valiant that that he could visit heaven whenever he desired while in the human form and claim half of the heavenly kingship, came, claim half of Indra's kingdom while in the human form. He was so brave, so opulent. And yet, when this king realized the transience of human life, the temporary, the fleeting nature of this human life, he immediately made plans to renounce his kingdom and all worldly comforts in order to retire to the forest and spend the rest of his days in search for God. Along with realizing the importance of the human body as well as its transience, we must also think about the certainty of death. We use the term dead sure. And what does it mean? It means death is something we are all sure to face. No one can escape from the clutches of death. There's a wonderful story in the scriptures. Once a man was hiking in the woods when it suddenly became dark and the man decided to leave. But some animals came in the way and blocked his path. And in trying to get away from them, he penetrated further into the woods. While running, he saw an old woman with arms outstretched as if to embrace him. He got frightened. He ran in the opposite direction. And then while running, now, while running, he stepped onto a grassy patch, which was really a deep pit, a deep hole in the ground covered by grass and creepers. His feet became entangled in the creepers and he found himself hanging upside down above the tree, from above the tree, above the pit, hanging upside down from the tree. Now there was a snake at the bottom of the pit waiting for this man to fall so that it may bite him. Two rats, one white, one black, were nibbling at the tree which held these creepers. And to make things worse, there was a beehive on that tree and the bees from the beehive started stinging the man on his face. But even in this precarious situation, this most, in this most dangerous situation, it was seen that the man wore a somewhat happy expression on his face. Why? Because some of the honey from the beehive was slowly trickling onto his lips and he was finding it very pleasurable. And in this pleasure, he had forgotten about the snake, the bees, and the rats. Now you may say that this man is extremely foolish, but the scriptures and the saints say that we are more foolish. You see, 
The animals blocking the man's path are likened to diseases that afflict us in life. That is something we do not have control over. But the old and the old woman symbolizes old age that wants to take us in its lap. And the two rats, one black, one white, are compared to day and night that are nibbling away at our life and as time passes and throwing us closer and closer to death. And the snake at the bottom of the pit represents time, which wants to devour us in the form of death. And the bees signify the endless desires that agitate our mind. And yet, the surprising fact is the little bit of sense enjoyment we experience in life from time to time makes us so intoxicated that we forget what a dangerous, what an uncertain and risky situation we are in, just like this man. Therefore, Narayan Goswami says to seekers, Do baatan ko bhooli mat, jo chah si kalyan, Narayan ek maut ko dujo shri bhagavan. He says, do not forget two things, death and God. Death first, God next. Why not God first? Because even if we understand the importance of God, we may procrastinate, postpone, thinking that we have many years to live, but keeping death in mind at all times get, will get rid of our tendency to procrastinate, to pro postpone devotional practice, bhakti. And hence, the Bhagavat also states, Labdhva sudur labhamidam bahusam bhavante manushya marthadam anityam abhihadhira. 11th Canto, 9th Chapter, 29th Verse. The Bhagavat states that although momentary, although this life is temporary, momentary, it can come to an end at any time. It provides a golden opportunity for God realization, for us to attain, fulfill our ultimate aim. Therefore, we should constantly meditate on the fact that our most valuable treasure in life lies not in the worldly objects or worldly relations, relationships that are temporary, that are perishable, but in the divine love and knowledge of God that are everlasting and ever increasing. Thus, to conclude, I'd like to quote a, a saying with this quotation by a saint, by saintly soul. Each soul is potentially divine. The saints say that each soul is potentially divine. The goal is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature, external and internal. So with these words, Bhali Vrindavan Bihari Lai Leki 
श्रीमद सतगुरु सरकार की जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे